do that you can't do. They're easy to do. The other side of that coin is they're easy not to do, okay? The hows aren't the problem, it's how you do the hows. And so anytime an action is not working, you always have to back up and check out what is the philosophy and attitude that's driving those actions. And so as I step into the hows and how to do this business, there's a couple of things I want to share to especially new people. Number one, quit wanting what you don't want. What do I mean by that? It's really amazing how people come into this business, new brand partners, okay, baby brand partners, like I said, they have a job and all these other things going on in their life. They come in and they go out and they talk to 10 people right away. Now remember, they're at their highest level of anxiety, their lowest level of knowledge, so that's the worst person to go out and talk to 10 people right away, right? I mean, you're going to be the worst you've ever been when you first start. You go out to talk to 10 people, immediately out of those 10 people, probably eight or nine people are, eight or nine of them are negative, right? And that blows them out of the water. Quit wanting what you don't want. You don't want eight or nine people out of the first people you talk to to get what you're talking about. Because they got, got it, there would be no opportunity. You get that. So a new person has to change their philosophy of how they approach this business. You don't want everybody to get what you're doing. See, Arthur Schopenhauer is one of the greatest business philosophers of all time. He's a German business philosopher from hundreds of years ago. He said all opportunities go through three stages. First of all, be ridiculed. Second of all, be opposed. Third of all, it will serve as self-evident. He said only 3% of us will ever engage in the first two stages where it's ridiculed and opposed. 97% will wait until it's what? Self-evident. So reality is what you have to be able to do is, you, you ever met a person that says, hey, I'm looking for a ridicule and pose? No, you don't, okay? But that's where the opportunity is at, okay? So quit wanting what you don't want. Quit wanting that everybody around you to understand what you're doing. So with that said, what I want to do is before I get into the hows, I want to talk a little bit about Miriam before I get into it because here's where we're, when a new brand partner gets in here, we're asking about ready to go down a path. And, 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 and uh, Casey, do you have that chart of the, the first year of the company? Up there, is it up? You guys tell me. Yeah. Okay. I want you to follow this, okay? Because this is really interesting as I go into what you do to be successful in this business. This is a chart of a year in our company. First year, okay, in the company. And this is a chart of the fastest growing company in the history of direct sales in its first year. No company's ever gone over $100 million in the first year. No company's ever gone to the top, to the top 100 DSM in its first year. No company's ever got the Bravo Award for outstanding achievement in the direct sales industry in its first year, okay? But this is our first year, this is our first year it looks like. Now let's just say I approach you and I'm your brand new baby, your brand, baby brand partner. And your goal a year from now is to make $10,000 a year a month. Now that's ridiculous, okay? Because quite honestly, less than 5% of the people in America make over $10,000 a month. But I'm just using this analogy, okay? So you have, you have big goals. Now the reality is most people haven't got, done anything in the last 5 to 10 years to get themselves to $10,000 a month. I, it always cracks me up they haven't done it in the last 5 or 10 years, but they want to do it the next year here. Would you give it the next five years to do it? Quite honestly, if they understood how business really works, they would. And that's why in franchise, they say it takes you five years to get your money back to be successful. But with that said, you came in and you're going to follow the historical path of, of Miriam, the fastest company, okay? Not an average company, the fastest company. Your first, year, your first month in the company, doing all the things I'm going to be talking about, you make, like, what, $222. Second month, you make $510. Third month, I think $760. I can't read this. It, huh? It's not up, Casey. Okay. Um, <laughs> fourth month, $869. Fifth month, $1,270. Sixth month, $1,800. And is that $40? $1,840. Now, I sat with you and I said, you do these things I'm going to ask you to do, and a year from now you're going to be making $10,000 a month, and you're six months into doing the things I asked you to do, would you start questioning what I'm asking you to do? Everybody does. This is the problem. Right here is the whole business of this business, okay? If you can get this right here, you'd be successful, because most people start questioning what you're asking them to do start questioning the opportunity, start listening to other people, start looking at other things, and they don't stay consistently, persistently long enough in doing the activity, because there are simple things we ask them to do. We have an eight-point system we ask them to do a day. Eight-point system, it's in our planner. 
It's the, they're the, every one of these things is easy to do, they're easy not to do. And here's the suck about every one of them. I'll give you an example. We ask you to do two exposures a day. Two exposures a day. Using a magazine, an Alcon system, whatever it might be, okay? Here's the sucker bet right here. If you do two exposures today, do you succeed today? No. If you don't do two exposures today, do you fail today? No. The difference between doing the right activity and not doing the right activity is so insignificant, it's so subtle, it means so little that you don't think it matters and it matters so much. See, if you go out to the end of that chart, you don't have to put it up, Casey, but you go out to the chart to $10,000 where the curve goes up to there, okay? That's the goal. That's the dream of what you want. But guess what is the only thing you have? The only thing you have is the moment you're in. This is where people really miss it. The only thing you ever have in your life is the moment you're in. You do not have the past. You can learn from the past. You don't have the future. You can be drawn to the future. But the only thing you have is the moment. Guess what the moment is? It's pretty much insignificant things that don't matter in the big picture. But the only way you achieve a big picture is by stringing moments together which are insignificant. So the second bet is you're sitting there, you have two exposures today, and you decide, do I have to do these today? Nah, if I don't do them, I'm not going to fail. And you're right, you don't fail in the moment. If I do them today, big deal, I'm not going to be successful, I'm not going to be to $10,000. You're right, if you do them, you're not going to be there. And so the, 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 the decision on doing it or not doing it is exactly the same, and so it really doesn't matter. So in the moment, you don't do it, but the only thing you have is the moment. You gotta get that. The only thing you have is the moment, and what you do in the moment is what gives you big things. See, when you buy a franchise for two hundred fifty dollars $500,000, I don't have to give you this conversation. You live in the moment. You show up at six in the morning, you stay there until 10 o'clock at night, you're doing the hamburgers and dealing with the 13 screaming teenagers and all the inventory overhead, right? You live in the moment because I have what? $500,000 of yours. Here, because it's not a big investment, you have the dignity of choice, you make a decision that it doesn't matter. And so what you need to understand, the, what, the decisions in the moment are everything, and they're insignificant in the choice of them. And when you get that, the business starts to work for you. And here's the thing you really got to understand. Today I'm going to be using an example of two exposures a day, as far as exposure. I'm going to be using the example of 10 pages of a good book a day, as far as personal development. I'll be mean, using an example of eight points a day, which is our system that we try to duplicate. If you do that and duplicate your organization, you can build an organization, okay? Here's the big thing, y'all, you need to understand also. Literally 80%, maybe 90% of the things you do in the moment, you do by yourself. You're not in this room here. You're not in a market party. You're not amongst other brand partners. You're not with your workout partner. You're by yourself. You got to get this. It's a solo journey. It really is. And that's why it's so important you plug back into everything we do. Because you go out there, it can get very, very negative very, very quick. Okay? And so most of the things you do, they don't matter in the moment. You're doing them by yourself. Nobody's watching. If you do them, you don't have 10,000. If you don't do them, you don't fail in 10,000. But in that moment is all you have. You've got to get that. And if you don't do that, understand that in the direct sales industry, you're out of business. And it's not just you, you gotta get a group of, an army of people, one to five to 25, getting that to be successful. So with that said, for me on my side of the business, I'm trying to get you to understand the philosophy you have to have to be successful, to be a distributor. To be a brand partner, goes to a senior brand partner, goes to a director, senior director, all the way up to the comp plan, okay? On my side, what I have to do is give you a business that if you're willing to listen to what we're talking to you about, if you're willing to do the little things that seem to make no difference at all in the act of doing them, and just do them over and 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 over with consistency and persistency over a long enough period of time, that there'll be something there for you, okay? It's really interesting because the, the book, The Side Edge, that I wrote, that book's gone all over the world now. It's in so many languages I can't keep up with it, although I've only printed it in English, okay? But it, I think that's cool. And the book's gone to millions of people, although I just wrote the book and gave it to a couple hundred people, and it just kind of worked virally. But the truth behind that book is, all it was was a training I put together a long time ago when I was in the field doing what you're doing. And I was trying to get my field to understand the little things matter. That's all it was. And I put together a training called The Slide Edge. 
I started going around to my organization, teaching a thing, a, a new concept to them called the side edge, that successful people do the little things that seem to make no difference at all in the act of doing them.